Most people have found the transition from Excel 2003 to Excel 2007 and Excel 2010 a little difficult. This video is designed to make the transition a little smoother to help you navigate through the new front end and show you some of the features that are new or different. I am here on the home tab of the Excel 2007 screen. On the top left hand corner of the screen you'll notice a round button. This is called the Microsoft Office button and replaces the file option that was in the 2003 software. If you click on the button, you'll notice that most of the commands previously found under the file menu item in previous versions are found here, such as the new, open and save commands. This area here over the right hand side is known as the Microsoft Office ribbon, which replaces the previous menus on Excel 2003. If you click across the headings, you'll see there are a number of commands or tasks that can be performed underneath each one. You may find it difficult to find some of the commands within the new ribbon. For example, formulas which used to be found underneath the Insert menu item in Excel 2003 is now found within the Formulas tab. Microsoft have made the software a little more intuitive in that respect, however because we are creatures of habit you may find it a little frustrating for the first few weeks you use the product. Let's look briefly over each of the tabs in the Microsoft Office ribbon. The Home tab contains commands to move data around the worksheet, format the text, add or remove rows, columns and worksheets. The next tab along, the Insert tab, contains commands to insert different elements into the worksheet such as pictures, charts, tables, etc. The Page Layout tab contains commands to configure the overall layout of the worksheet, for example to adjust page margins or resize the page. The Formulas tab contains commands to calculate or insert formulas. The Data tab contains commands to manipulate data in the worksheet audit information and analyse trends. The review tab contains commands to fact check, proofread and edit the worksheet or make use of the research and translation features or protect the worksheet. The view tab contains commands to view elements of the worksheet in different ways, for example zoom, page breaks, etc. Within each of the tabs, the commands are grouped together based on similar tasks or functions. So for example, the font group here lists a number of the commands to do with changing the colour, size and general look of the text. The number group here has a number of functions to do with the formatting of numbers and so on. On the bottom right hand corner of each of these groups, you'll notice there is what looks like a little arrow. That is what's called a dialog box launcher and if you click on it, it will launch a dialog box with some other commands and tasks pertaining to that particular group. So if you find the command you are looking for is not visible on the Microsoft Office ribbon, click on that dialog box launcher and it may be available for you there. By the way, if you click on the Alt button on your keyboard, it will display the shortcuts for each of the menu items on the ribbon. So for example, to then take me to the Formulas tab, I would type the letter M on my keyboard. I'll just press the Escape key on my keyboard now to turn that off. At the top of the Microsoft ribbon is what is called the Quick Access Toolbar, and it contains some commonly used commands such as Undo, Save, etc. If you click on the arrow to the right of the Quick Access Toolbar, it will give you an opportunity to add further commands to the toolbar. You can see here that any of the items with a tick next to them are currently appearing on the Quick Access Toolbar. To add another command, such as the Open command, all I need to do is select the item by clicking on it in the list. And you can now see that the Open command is appearing on my Quick Access Toolbar. Similarly, to take anything off the Quick Access Toolbar, I click on the drop down arrow to the right of it and click on one of the items that are ticked in order to deselect it. If I click on the drop down arrow to the right of the Quick Access Toolbar again, you'll see a couple of other items. This one here allows me to move the Quick Access Toolbar so that it appears below the Microsoft Office ribbon. You can now see that the Quick Access Toolbar is appearing down here. If I click on the drop down arrow on the Quick Access Toolbar again, right down the bottom of the list I have an option to minimise the ribbon. If I click on that, you'll see that only the headings of the tabs are now displayed.
If I then want to view the commands within each of those tabs, I simply click on the tab name. To maximise the ribbon again, I go back into the Quick Access toolbar and deselect Minimise the ribbon by clicking on it. On the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you'll now see a zoom slider. You can simply slide the bar to the left to make the view smaller or to the right to make it appear larger. You can also click along the slider itself to achieve similar results. To the left of the zoom slider you'll see three different view buttons. The view on the far left is the normal view which is what we are seeing now. If I click on the second view it will show me a page layout view which is helpful to see what fits on one page. The last button along is a page break preview which allows you to see where your page breaks are if you have data that spans across multiple pages. I'll just return now to the normal view which is the button on the far left. Let's have a look at a couple of the new features in Excel 2007. One of the new features in Excel 2007 is the ability to save your document as a PDF file. To do that, simply click on the Microsoft Office button, click on Save As, and you'll see the second option from the bottom which says as PDF or XPS. Select that option and then you have the option to name the file and choose the file location and then click on Publish. I'll just cancel out of that for now though. Excel 2003 used to have a limitation of 64,000 rows, while Excel 2007 now features over a million rows. The columns also now go up to column XFD for those people with large data sets. With the launch of Excel 2007 has come an increase in the options available in conditional formatting. You are no longer limited to three conditions only, and there are some additional functions such as adding data bars. The sorting and filtering has also improved within this release. For example, you can now sort by font colour or cell colour within the custom sort area here. The new tables feature enables you to create tables easily and pick a style format for the table. You don't even have to know how to calculate an average or total, as you can now just add a total row to the table and then select the measure that you want from the drop-down list in the bottom row. Excel 2007 also now includes a live preview feature. What that means is that once you have selected a style for your table, for example, you can hover your mouse over the other styles that are available to see what it will look like before actually making your decision to select it. That's all I will be showing you in this video, but I hope you found it helpful.